In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, our Saviour, we come before you asking your mercy for ourselves and for your whole church, living and departed. As we follow you on the way of the cross and consider your sufferings, give us some share in all its merits. This road we intend to follow was marked by your sweat and blood. It saw you despised and rejected. Give us the spirit of true penitence and help us to bear with courage and patience all the crosses and humiliations which come to us during our pilgrimage through life, knowing that we follow you. Amen. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, after having been scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. Our Lord stands in silence, condemned to death. False witnesses have accused him. Judges in bad faith have condemned him. A friend has betrayed him. Still he remained silent. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly, never opening his mouth. Like a lamb before its shear, never opening its mouth. Lord, it was not Pilate. No, it was my sins that condemned you to die. I beseech you by the merits of this sorrowful journey to assist me in my journey towards eternity. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, in making this journey with the cross on his shoulders, fought to us and offered for us to his Father the death he was about to undergo. Jesus begins his sorrowful journey, burdened with the world's sin, still he thinks of each one of us. Embracing the cross, he does not complain of his fate, but the scripture says, For my part I made no resistance. I offered my back to those who struck me. I did not cover my face against insult and spit. My loving Jesus, by the merits of carrying your cross, give me the necessary help to carry mine with perfect patience and resignation. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Jesus falls the first time. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider this first fall of Jesus under his cross. His flesh was torn by the scourges. His head was crowned with thorns. He had lost a great quantity of blood. So weakened he could scarcely walk, he yet had to carry this great load upon his shoulders. The guards struck him violently, and he fell several times. Jesus falls at the feet of his tormentors, yet his longing for our salvation drives him on. He did not need the blows of the soldiery to flog him to Calvary. The love of his sacred heart drove him on. The Holy Spirit drove him on. The longing of the eternal Father to win us to heaven drove him on. Lord, how heavily my sins must weigh upon your sacred heart. By the merits of this first fall, deliver me from the misfortune of falling into mortal sin. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. his blessed love. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the meeting of the sun and the moon, which took place on this journey. Their looks became like so many arrows to wound those hearts which loved each other so tenderly. Jesus beholds the loving face of Mary amidst the mockeries around him. But now he is hardly recognisable, so disfigured did he look. Without beauty, without majesty she saw him, a thing despised and rejected by men, and the Lord has laid upon him the sins of us all. My Jesus, by the sorrow you experienced in this meeting, Grant me the grace of a devoted love for your holy mother. And do you, my queen, who were overwhelmed with sorrow, obtain for me a continual and tender remembrance of the passion of your son. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how his cruel tormentors, seeing Jesus was on the point of expiring and fearing he would die on the way, whereas they wished him to die the shameful death of the cross, constrained Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross behind our Lord. A stranger is forced to carry the cross of Jesus, and yet in doing so, faith came to Simon and his family. The scripture names him Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who became well known to Christ's followers. Lord Jesus, you invite all your people to take part with you 
He carried the cross, and like Simon of Cyrene, bring blessings upon themselves and upon others. I will try more willingly to unite my crosses and trials to your sacred passion. Help me by your grace. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the holy woman named Veronica, seeing Jesus so ill-used and bathed in sweat and blood, wiped his face with a towel, on which was left the impression of his holy countenance. This was indeed a gracious reward for Veronica's compassion. Yet in this meeting, there is a lesson for us all. For whenever out of love we minister to the needy, we receive an increase of grace, and the image and likeness of Christ grows in our souls. Lord, my soul was once beautiful when I received your grace and baptism. That I have so often disfigured it by my sins. You alone, my Redeemer, can restore it to its former beauty. Do this by your passion, O Jesus. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Second station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the second fall of Jesus under the cross, a fall which renews the pain of all the wounds in his head and members. Again, Jesus falls beneath the weight of the cross. Yet again, he staggers to his feet and continues along the road to Calvary. Lord, how many times have you pardoned me, and how many times have I fallen again and begun again to offend you? By the merits of this second fall, give me the help necessary to persevere in your grace until death. Grant that in all temptations which assail me, I may always commend myself to you. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how these women wept with compassion 
had seen Jesus in such a pitiable state, streaming with blood as he walked along. Daughters of Jerusalem, said he, weep not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. These courageous women mourned for him as he passed by, and supporting him in their grief, they openly confessed their faith in his name, fearless of what might happen to them. Lord Jesus, by the example of this meeting, let me always confess my faith in you as my Lord and my God, careless of any danger or derision it may bring me. I love you, Jesus, my life above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the third fall of Jesus Christ. His weakness was extreme, and the cruelty of his executioners excessive, who tried to hasten his steps when he could scarcely move. Jesus was but a few steps from Calvary, yet before he gained the very spot where he was to be crucified, again he fell to the ground. As scripture says of our holy Redeemer, my throat is dried up as parched clay, and in the dust of death you have laid me. My loving Jesus, by the merits of this third fall, never allow me to remain discouraged beneath the weight and repetition of my sins. Grant me confidence in your forgiveness and a firm purpose of amendment. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the violence with which Jesus was stripped by the executioners. His inner garments adhered to his torn flesh, and they dragged them off so roughly that the skin came with them. Pity your Saviour, so cruelly treated. Our Lord stands exposed to the gaze of the jeering crowd. He's made to look a fool for my sake. He, who is God's creating word, rightly possesses all things, now possesses nothing. My most innocent Jesus, by the merits of the ridicule that you bore, grant me readiness to be considered a fool for your sake. Strip me of all sinful desires for worldly things, but above all, Never allow me to be stripped of your grace. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Amen. Yeah. 
Roman station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, having been placed upon the cross, extended his hands and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. Our Saviour is crucified and in the company of two thieves. As scripture had foretold, he was taken for a sin while he was praying all the time for sins. As they fastened him with nails, he prayed for us all, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, by the merits of your prayer on Calvary, grant me real sorrow for all my sins, not only because of the punishments they deserve, but still more because of the suffering they have caused you, who love me so much. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, being consumed with anguish after three hours' agony on the cross, abandoned himself to the weight of his body, bowed his head, and died. How completely dependent we are on that holy cross for the grace of God's friendship, for forgiveness of sins, for hope of heaven hereafter. On Calvary, his life of sacrifice has reached its conclusion. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. My dying Jesus, since you are so deserving of all my love, May your love henceforward be my first concern. By the merits of your cross, unite my heart more firmly to your holy will. I commit my life into your hands. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always. And then do with me what you will. Consider how, after our Lord had died, two of his disciples, Joseph and Nicodemus, took him down from the cross and placed him in the arms of his sorrowful mother. Mary at last has possession of her son. Now when his enemies can do no more, they leave him to her in contempt. How deeply now she felt the force of Simeon's words, and your own soul a sword shall pierce. O mother of sorrows, for the love of your son, accept me as your servant and pray for me. And do you, my Redeemer, 
since you have died for me, grant that I may love you always, for I wish but you nothing more. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. station, Jesus is placed in the sepulchre. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the disciples, accompanied by his holy mother, carried the body of Jesus to bury it. They closed the tomb, and all came sorrowfully away. Jesus is left alone to rest in peace. And yet he is not alone, for the Father is always with him. He came from the Father into the world, and now he has left the world and gone to the Father. My buried Jesus, grant that I too may find your peace at life's end. And by the merits of your own resurrection on the third day, make me rise in glory with you, at the last day, to be always united with you in heaven, to praise you and to love you forever. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. Jesus Christ, when betrayed, did not hesitate to yield himself into his enemies' hands and undergo the agony of the cross. He who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.